I was wrong. I was wrong about Debian. Uh, recently, I released a video covering why do more people not use Debian. Uh, I talked about a couple different things. Primarily, their website is absolute garbage when it comes to the uh, organization. And apparently, at least according to you guys, that's supposed to be some sort of a IQ test, which, I mean, okay. <laughs> the website is horrible. It's a pain to install. It's just a not up-to-date operating system that doesn't receive the kind of love and support that some of the alternatives get. Now, what I was wrong about wasn't necessarily what was in that video, just my overall opinions and thoughts of the operating system. But you know what I'm not wrong about? How awesome it is to go ahead and set up your very own Linode on Akamai Connected Cloud, with options to pick between a wide variety of Linux distributions, including Debian, or you can pick a application from their huge list of one-click installers. Set up something like a WordPress website, a database, whatever you need with ease, and better yet, you can get a $100 60-day credit to get started today. So this right here is my current Debian install, and yes, it does look a, uh, a little bit like Ubuntu, I do promise you it is not. I installed Debian on this not necessarily crappy, but definitely cheap laptop here. It has essentially what is kind of a, a Celeron class of CPU. It's a uh, Alder Lake N95, uh, yeah, four cores at 3.4 gigahertz, like barely a step above those Celerons. I installed it here just to kind of get a feel for it, and I do find myself actually using this cheap $200 computer more than anything else at the moment just because of the operating system I have on it. Main problem, like I said, with Debian is it's just kind of out of date. And I mean, it's been bad to the point where past versions have been completely out of date before they even officially ship. With Debian 12 Bookworm, it has gotten significantly better. And as an example, for me personally, I started liking the uh, GNOME desktop environment when it hit about version 40. Anything kind of like three point ever, or before that I wasn't a fan of, I used KDE Plasma almost exclusively, at least before they came out with that version 40. The updates to GNOME 40 and onward have been completely awesome, making a wonderful desktop environment. The version of GNOME on this version of Debian 12 is 43.4, which is relatively new, new enough that it feels like a fresh GNOME install. And it's not like you're running it back to the past like you would with a previous version of Debian. For example, the last release shipped with 3.38. Unfortunately, they did miss version 44, so kind of the key difference that I noticed personally is like with the, the little Bluetooth pill menu thing, it's missing the little drop down and a few other really cool features. But honestly, 43 is up to date enough for my personal use case, so that in combination with things like Flatpak and whatnot, the up-to-dateness isn't really as big of a deal as previous releases. As with these standard kind of front-facing user experience applications, I just use Flatpak for those, so those get their regular updates with that kind of containerized system. And all the system components, it's not really as big of a deal if those are held back. And actually, it's probably better because that just adds to the overall stability of the operating system. And as time will go on for the next couple of years and we get closer to the... Uh, 13th release, this system might feel a little dated, but just not as much as the previous releases. And of course, we could always switch to testing repos if we want to, but overall, it's been really good. Debian 12 just feels like Ubuntu without all the kind of canonical crap added to it. I mean, there's absolutely no mention of anything like a Ubuntu Pro or Debian Pro kind of uh, cooked into the system. There's no snap packages installed, which is nice. You kind of have to manually set up Flatpak, but I prefer to kind of pick and choose some of those things versus having like the Firefox snap pack pre-installed. Overall, it's just a base vanilla install. Granted, they do add a bunch of like random open source games and tools, at least when I go ahead and select the kind of default options within the installer. Now I do talk a little smack on Ubuntu, and when you look at my desktop, you see it looks almost identical to it. And quite honestly, I've been using Ubuntu for quite a little bit on my older ThinkPad that I featured in a couple different videos. And I just kind of got used to the dock over on the side there. And of course, with the GNOME extensions and the extension manager application, it's really easy to customize it and get it looking exactly how I would like to. And kind of a good thing about a slightly downgraded version of GNOME and knowing that it's not going to just update randomly someday is you're gonna have a lot more stability when it comes to the extensions that you pick 
and kind of even more options as there are many that have not been quite updated to 44 as of yet. Plus you won't get that random update breaking your entire customized desktop. Actually using the system despite the hardware I have it installed on has been one of the smoothest and snappiest experiences that I've had in a Linux distribution. I did get this laptop from Ace Magician. I did a video on one of their mini PCs. It was the one that kind of looked like a camera from 1990s with that weird dial on top. So I'm gonna somehow make a either dedicated video on this or feature. I might compare it to like a old ThinkPad that you could get for the same price. I think that would be fun. So do make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell. I've tried a few different distros on it. I've tried Fedora, Endeavor OS, and they all work, but this with Debian was the first time where I didn't really have any weird random issues and I didn't need to go fix anything or find some sort of workaround just to get something working. Everything just seems to be working out of the box with Debian. The only real negative experience I had is with the GTR7. This is a brand new computer from I believe it's B-Link. Has the new 7000 series of AMD Ryzen mobile CPUs very new. It's, it's a beast of a machine overall, but it had a real rough time with Debian. The graphics performance was a lackluster, at least compared to Fedora, which I currently have installed on it. So if you're somebody who's running like bleeding edge software, Debian probably isn't going to be your best bet, but anything older than like a year or two should be completely fine. Uh, another thing that has gotten a lot better going back to a positive point is the installation process, even using the net installer, which is what I opted for this time when I installed it on this laptop here. In my previous attempts to install Debian, it didn't have the non-free drivers pre-included, which now it does in Debian 12. This is a very good thing. I know a lot of the, uh, open source purists aren't too fond of it primarily probably the folks at the uh, free software foundation or whatever but this is really good when it comes to availability a lot of the hardware i have in my system the drivers for the wi-fi is proprietary so it's just good they include that it's really discouraging when you go to install a distribution and you can't connect to wi-fi you just go oh, i'm gonna try something else and that's what i did when installing debian or that will unfortunately lead you to trying to navigate through their website to find the appropriate ISO with the non-free driver set you're going to need. The installation process for the net installer after realizing Wi-Fi was working that was great was a pretty straightforward process. There are some things that aren't quite as newbie friendly as like an Ubuntu install such as like the proxy server option or knowing you kind of need to skip the root password thing if you just want to use your user account as the pseudo user but overall it's fairly straightforward and that's basically my review of debian it is a great operating system it's really refreshing of an operating system compared to some of the other ones that uh, i have been using Fedora is still my baby but even red hat and fedora are making some rather questionable decisions that kind of make me weary of the direction of that project they're laying off people they're stripping things or functionality with CentOS. There's just some weird things going on. Ultimately, the one thing I'm going to do for sure is switch out Ubuntu for Debian on that old ThinkPad, and we'll go from there. So with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Again, subscribe. We got some wonderful stuff up on the pipeline. Check out our newsletter. It is a weekly newsletter in which we publish Linux news, tech news, free and open source software news, bunch of good stuff there. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.